So to kick things off, hurricane impact on birds falls into two buckets, direct impact and indirect impact. As you might guess, direct impact would be how a hurricane impacts birds or bird populations at the time of the event. So as the hurricane is going. Indirect impact is how the aftermath of the hurricane affects birds. And this is sometimes the part that we overlook. We just kind of worry about the immediate danger, the immediate threat, and forget that the aftermath can cause a lot of issues too. For direct impact, I've got six ways hurricanes impact birds that I'll talk about. And I'll get the like more of the bad news out of the way first, so like the, the fatal situations. And then I'll talk about the non-fatal things that can happen. So sort of a bad news, less bad news situation. Okay, so starting out, wind is the first way, and that's the primary way we would guess. Uh, wind is blowing birds around. If they're migrating, they're getting thrown off course. If they're migrating over the Gulf of Mexico or over a, another large body of water, the wind throwing them off course could mean that they're going to run out of stored fat reserves before even making it to land. The good news is that when it comes to migration, there have been some experiments that show birds, due to the electromagnetic sensitivity, birds are able to course correct, and that's really helpful. But wind can throw them against things, it can knock trees down that they're nesting in or roosting in, which can lead to injury or death. Um, it's, it's really brutal, so yeah, sorry. I, I know this sounds really awful, but I kind of just want to get these things out of the way first. Another thing that can happen, especially for migrating birds, is that they can get trapped in the eye of the storm. And this is, this is kind of common. The eye of the hurricane is calmer. It's a calmer area. So it makes sense that birds trying to avoid the storm would end up caught up in the eye. Hurricane hunters spotted this with Hurricane Milton. Weather radar also showed this with Hurricane Helene, where a blue mass was spotted within the eye. But getting trapped in the eye, like I said, it's, it's not a recent thing. In a review paper from 2018, the author cited this happening from time to time. It's, it's actually pretty common. Now, while the eye is calm, the risk of being trapped in the eye is that migrating birds may end up uh, following it off course and hurricanes can move slowly, which is what the author pointed out. So as the birds stay trapped, they're at a greater risk of exhaustion and inability to find food or shelter, especially once it goes back out to water. Rain is the next factor. Hurricanes dump a lot of rain, even in the feeder bands. Uh, I've, I've driven through it and it is like driving under a waterfall. Um, it's awful. <laughs> While birds' feathers are really good at retaining heat and keeping water out, they can only do so much. And during a hurricane, birds can end up with hypothermia and die as a result. This is more likely to happen with nesting birds where their feathers aren't fully developed. In open nests, a mother bird will do what she can to you know, shield her nestlings from the rain. I've seen some robins ride out some pretty heavy thunderstorms and rain, but if the nest is wet and there are days of rain, that nest will stay wet and those babies, they're not gonna make it. Flooding from storm surges are the next way hurricanes can directly impact birds. When hurricanes come, the water level rises and it leads to flooding. In some situations, storm surges have caused greater mortality rates than wind accidents. Marsh birds and seabirds may be more susceptible to this. But keep in mind, while this is just really sad to think about, again, and I say it over and over, birds have that instinct and they have ways of avoiding the storm and finding shelter elsewhere. I believe this paper that I read, they gave a case where 10% of a species in that population died due to flooding. And to me, I guess I'm trying to stay optimistic here by thinking, thank goodness it wasn't worse than that. One of the things I mentioned earlier is when it comes to direct impact from hurricanes, it's not always a fatal situation. For instance, one thing that can happen during a hurricane is that it will disrupt migration. And there are a few examples here. In 1979, during Hurricane Gerda, one researcher reported a bird banding station having more birds than usual. These were migrators, and this was a result of a hurricane. Mist nets used for catching and banding birds have had higher capture rates when hurricanes have come through, and this, this will be when a hurricane comes through during migration, which also suggests this migratory disruption. But the other example that was really interesting to me was when a hurricane hit in the Caribbean a researcher reported barn swallows, which are normally daytime migrators, um, they were also flying at night. And so 
their cycle was kind of disrupted or they were just exhausted and trying to get away and, and flying at night as well. Another non-fatal way hurricanes can directly impact birds is by transporting them to a new territory or a non-native range. Windblown birds could end up further than their native range or end up on an island where they're not naturally from. And this has been reported a few times. One example is with the European starling ending up in St. Anne, Jamaica after a hurricane in 1944. Now, these starlings were not coming from Europe. They were probably coming from the southern areas of North America. Starlings were introduced by humans to North America in the 1800s, and that in itself has caused an ecological problem because they fatally attack native birds very regularly. But now pair that with them being windswept to an island. On islands, invasive species can accelerate ecological damage. So this is one case that really stood out to me from a conservation standpoint. American kestrels are another example where they were seen on Mona Island, which I think is also called Isle, Isle de Mona. And they were found in 1935 due to a hurricane. There's some benefit to hurricanes transporting species, or at least some, some researchers feel this way. They believe that this is good for overall species survival, but then there's the conservation situation where these birds aren't native to those areas and they don't have a role in that ecosystem. So their presence could be disruptive. However, a hurricane is naturally introducing a bird to a new area, which is much different than when people are introducing a new species to an area. So good or bad, I'm not really sure on this. I feel kind of indifferent, except for the starling situation. These are just some of the direct ways hurricanes can impact birds. And yeah, the mortality situation is definitely a concern. It's both sad and really interesting and unexpected. But birds also have a lot of ways of surviving hurricanes and detecting hurricanes. And I have another video about that. So I'll have a link in the description if you wanna see how they, they can avoid or just make it through. What I found though even more interesting was the indirect ways hurricanes impact populations of birds. And this can actually have a greater long-term impact. So let's talk about that. I've got six kind of seven ways hurricanes indirectly impact birds. There, there were more, but these were some of the bigger highlights worth mentioning. First off is loss of food. When a hurricane comes through, a really bad one too, it dumps rain, it floods, and if the winds are really bad, it's knocking over old trees and stripping other trees of their foliage. This just destroys food supply, especially for nectar-loving birds, seed-eating birds, and berry-eating birds. By these examples, I mean birds whose primary diets are made up of those things. So hummingbirds, for example, are nectivores, um, especially during migration where they're really building up their fat stores for the trip. Without flowers, we've got no nectar. And yes, they eat bugs, which has protein and, and some fat, but they really, really, really need those sugars. Their metabolism is just built for that. Goldfinches are another example because their diet is mostly made up of seed and plant. They don't really eat that many bugs. So when the land is just stripped of these things, they've lost their food supply. Cedar waxwings have a diet primarily made of berries and fruits. And without those things, there's also a massive food shortage for them. So these kind of birds are extremely vulnerable. Insect eating birds are thought to not be quite as vulnerable. However, from doing some previous research on purple martins, which are an example of an insect eating bird, Hurricane Agnes that came through the northern coast in 1979 devastated the population of purple martins in areas of Pennsylvania. It rained for two to three weeks straight, which just cut at the food supply. So many nestlings died, parents died, it was bad. And it took a long time for those populations to recover their numbers. However, the reason researchers still believe insect eating birds are less susceptible to uh, food shortages is because bugs have a shorter, faster life cycle. And in some cases, certain insects and arthropod species can thrive after hurricanes. And part of that is because there's maybe less predators in the mix overall, so fewer predators means their numbers can increase. Along the lines of food shortages caused in the aftermath of a hurricane is saltwater intrusion into freshwater habitats. And yes, as you probably guessed, that's going to have some really bad impact on the things living in the freshwater pockets. And when it disrupts those habitats, it also is another cause for food shortages. During Hurricane Hugo, the saltwater intrusion into freshwater habitats caused a problem with the white ibis populations that were feeding on freshwater crayfish. 
this is just one of those impactful things that I really didn't think about. And it's, it's not exactly surprising, but it is unexpected, at least for me anyway. The next way hurricanes indirectly impact birds is by stripping foraging spots. During a really bad hurricane with heavy winds, the foliage is being stripped away. And this can leave birds, uh, certain birds who forage among the leaves without uh, what's called a foraging substrate. Losing nesting sites is the next situation. And while this is classified as indirect, I would argue that it's kind of both indirect and direct. During a hurricane, you could have nests blown out and limbs down, but I also see why it's indirect, because it can disrupt nesting potential. What I mean by this is if you lose your normal nesting habitat, because different species have very particular nesting habits and require very particular nesting habitats, so if this is gone after a hurricane has just blown through, you lose that potential to nest in that area. And depending on how long recovery takes, you could have a whole population where would-be nesting birds are absent from the area. And so it could be that it's not until the following nesting season that they, they can finally nest again and get their numbers back and everything. An interesting case happened during Hurricane Hugo, and it had to do with nesting bald eagles. South Carolina lost an estimated 44% of their bald eagles' nests after the hurricane. What was really amazing, though, is that none of the eagles were reported dead, so they were spared from the immediate direct impact of the hurricane. But they did lose a lot of nests. Interestingly, a lot of them rebuilt their nests that same season. So what's great is that their overall numbers weren't significantly impacted in the end. So that was good. And that brings me to the increase in predation events that happens after hurricanes. What's really interesting is that raptor populations, so your eagles, hawks, falcons, owls, they're not as negatively impacted by hurricanes compared to your land songbirds and your seabirds. After a hurricane with those really heavy winds, like I mentioned, you don't have as much foliage. And if there are several downed trees and there aren't many high places, um, you just don't have as many places to hide. And then with a bunch of exhausted, disoriented, and possibly displaced songbirds in the mix after a hurricane, um, we have easy pickings for predators. The next thing that happens is loss of habitat, which I kind of have been mentioning throughout this whole video. But in the aftermath of a hurricane where everything is just leveled or flooded or stripped, Birds who had a specific area they resided or habitat, well, it's gone. Now, birds can fly, so that's good, but that can increase stress into new areas that they come into. It can increase territorial fights, it can increase competition between the same species or even different species within that new habitat. Then there's local extinction events. That's the next thing that can happen. When we think about extinction, a lot of times we think about a species disappearing off the face of the earth. But there is also the concept of local extinction, where a species that is known for a certain area disappears from that area. These local extinctions can be temporary, where the species has been displaced or delayed from arriving in that zone, but eventually then it returns. Or it can be permanent, where they never return. And this has definitely happened before. It can happen especially on islands where species just disappear from that island after a hurricane. Another cause for concern in all of this is this idea of habitat fragmentation. What this means is that as we develop more areas and wipe out different habitats, we end up with smaller, smaller habitat zones and fewer large habitat zones. And this increases the risk of these local extinction events because as these habitats get smaller and more isolated, it allows more damage in those specific areas and it's more easy to just wipe out that whole area. To add to that, it's important to keep in mind that within an ecosystem, different species play a different important role and their roles and relationships with other animals bring balance to that ecosystem. So a local extinction can disrupt the rest of that local ecosystem because that role is now vacant. So hurricanes can do a lot. They disrupt a lot. And that brings me to how, how can we help? 
First of all, this entire channel is about more than just backyard birding and basic bird education. The goal of this channel is to teach, but also to help us build in good conservation practices into our backyard birding so we can help birds. And if you want to bring more to your backyard birding game and do things the right way, you, you might want to subscribe for that reason. I, I, I think you'll learn a lot from this channel. So as far as what we can do to help and not add more to the stress of, of what birds are going through, here's, here's what we can do. First, even if you're not in an area directly hit by a hurricane or impacted by a hurricane, some of this information can still be useful because remember, there are birds that are displaced or birds that wander away from their normal areas and, and need to find food and resources. Second, if you are in an area that was directly impacted by a hurricane, help yourself first. I don't want to burden you by suggesting that you need to help birds when, when your own lives have been impacted by all of this. P.S. Erica, Erica, if you're watching this, I hope everything went okay for you recently. Next, for anyone who is in a position to help, here is what you can do. To start, provide food. Seed and live mealworms are great options. And when it comes to seed, get nutty blends, peanuts, tree nuts, pumpkin seeds, sunflower seeds, safflower, cranberry, things like that. Avoid blends with filler, which is milo, millet, and cracked corn. These don't contain enough protein and fats, and they also tend to bring invasive birds. For hummingbirds, put out nectar feeders and avoid red dye and change out the sugar water mix often, daily really, so hummingbirds don't get sick. If their flowers are all gone, they're gonna need something. And if it's late in the year, still keep up with your feeders and keep them out because there are stragglers and delayed migrators where your nectar feeder could be a lifesaver. For any injured bird or animal that you find, call a licensed rehabber. Always call a rehabber. Don't try to DIY rehab an injured wild animal yourself. First, it's not legal if you're not licensed to do so. And second, I have seen bad consequences of when people are trying to help and they think they know what they're doing and then they end up not knowing what they're doing and it just harms the animal even more. Finally, consider rebuilding habitat or creating habitat in your own backyard. Introduce native plants, which helps native bugs thrive and that feeds your birds and also gives them cover. And it's good for all of us to just try and turn our backyard into a real ecosystem. 